Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about some storms and showers over the southwest corner of Western Australia, some more rainfall on the cards for Tasmania's west coast, some storms over the interior and the north of Australia, and some heavy rainfall that's possible now up in far north and central Queensland. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated. So we're going to start things off over in the southwest of Western Australia. We did have a cold front blow through late last Last night that's bringing showers and storms across much of the south and the southwest of Western Australia. In fact, storms have been extending as far out as the south interior and parts of the goldfields out towards Cocklebitty Roadhouse and Rilwina, uh, well into the south interior and into remote uh, Western Australia. Showers and storms are expected to continue over the southwest for the next 36 to 48 hours or so, with some heavy falls possible with accumulations between 40 and 50 millimetres not being ruled out now of a parts of the south uh, coastal regions. You can see it here on the rainfall forecast. There there is going to be some isolated periods of heavy rainfall, some heavy showers possible throughout the remainder of this morning for the south coastal region. Uh, Perth should have temporary easing of the rainfall over the coming couple of hours. It should clear up a little bit for tonight before a later uh, before a cold front comes through later tonight into early tomorrow morning. This one here will have the bulk of the rainfall that's going to be coming through over the next 36 to 48 hours. That will kind of cross the coast in the south regions around sort of 4 or 5 a.m. before crossing the coast up around Perth with some showers and storms possible around 7 or 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. The falls could be heavy at times up there, especially associated with thunderstorms. You could be seeing showers bringing through between between 10 and 30 millimetres. I reckon the heaviest of the falls will be remaining towards the south coastal region and into the hills, but the, we can't be ruling out some heavier falls around the Perth metro area. The Bureau of Meteorology has got between 4 and 15 millimetres of rain on the forecast. I actually think 15 millimetres might be lowballing this weather system. Anywhere up to 25 millimetres is possible for at least the southern and the eastern suburbs, and between 15 and 20 millimetres for the northern suburbs. Of course, with thunderstorms now in the forecast and the chance of small hailstones and isolated pockets of heavy showers, the Rainfall will be very hit and miss. Some places will only pick up a couple of millimetres. I reckon those will be the coastal suburbs and then uh, other locations, especially around the hills and into the south, will pick up much more rainfall. That's at least around the Perth metro area. Around the south coast, I reckon the rainfall will be a little bit more evenly spread. Um, throughout Thursday, we're expecting the showers and storms continue until about 5 or 6 p.m., clearing out of Perth at around 6 p.m., then clearing out of the south coastal regions at around 7 or 8 p.m. that night. Showers and storms will still continue for the uh, remote southern st parts of the state, especially around sort of Walpole, North Cliff and Windy Harbour. However, they're expected to clear out early Friday morning. Some showers will still linger throughout the course of Friday, but the conditions will clear up in time for the weekend. Now, another thing that I'm sure you've all heard about it, especially on the news, they're really drumming this one home is the temperatures. It's going to be really cold starting from later tonight into early tomorrow morning. You can see temperatures expected to dip into the low single digits by uh, tomorrow morning and temperatures expected to remain very cold in fact into the single digits for some areas especially around Katanning and Mount Barker right throughout tomorrow and into Friday. In fact we're expecting a very cool maxima around sort of Manjimup and Pemberton of just 8 degrees Celsius tomorrow. Very very cold indeed and it's expected to remain that way for at least the next sort of 48 hours where temperatures will be remaining in those single digit sort of uh, areas for at least the next 48 hours until about Friday afternoon where temperatures will hopefully rise a little bit and with those really cold temperatures of course it brings the chances of some very light snow flurries across some of the high peaks uh, around Western Australia. Now when I say high peaks I use that term very loosely because there's a couple of high peaks on the Stirling Ranges such as Bluff Knoll which is kind of the only place where snow can fall from a weather event like this. Uh, the forecast models have outlined the chances of some snowfall on some of the lower elevation hills around the south coastal region and the Parongarup ranges, but I reckon the only place that's going to receive the chance of snowfall at least, which is probably sitting at around 40 or 50% chance of a snow flurry or two, is Bluff Knoll and maybe some of the higher peaks in the Stirling Ranges. So snow loves, it looks like early Thursday morning into later Thursday morning, there is the chance of some light snow flurries across some of the highest peaks of the Stirling Ranges. If I was to give an exact time, I reckon the chance of snow flurries remains throughout the day but I reckon it's going to be early morning until the late morning and then once again into the late afternoon into the early evening where the rainfall will then start to ease off by late evening. The chances of snow is very minimal at this time and it certainly isn't going to be anything record breaking or settling so again take it with take this forecast with a heavy pinch of salt uh, and I wouldn't race up the mountains expecting to find enough snow to build a snowman. I just reckon that there is the chance of some snowfall given the weather conditions on the top of Bluff Knoll. 
Again, make sure you do consult with the Parks Authority. Hiking conditions, as with all cold fronts, uh, the Stirling Ranges, they do have alpine weather conditions. Hiking will be dangerous, so I do not advise it in a weather event like this, unless you are very experienced. Uh, however, there is the chance of some snowfall up there uh, over the coming sort of 36 to 48 hours. In terms of rainfall accumulations as well, that's another important factor with this forecast before we go and talk about uh, elsewhere across the nation. Peak rainfall accumulations between sort of that 20 to 30 millimetre mark, at least around the Perth metro area, slightly drier along the coast and into the north, but the hills expecting at least 20 millimetres, and I'd say that's a pretty fair call. The south coast, however, is expecting to pick up the most amount of rainfall. I reckon locations around Windy Harbour, North Cliff and Walpole will pick up the majority of the rainfall from this weather event. Minimal accumulation to expect it to make it out into the weed belt. There still could be a couple of millimetres out there, especially around sort of Corrigan, Narragin, Beverley, and up towards York and Northam, but I don't expect too much in the way of rainfall out into the wheat belt, and all of it will be clearing out by early Friday morning. As a long-winded forecast of the southwest of Western Australia, especially when it's only a little cold front that we're talking about, before I do pack this forecast up and talk about something else, there is something uh, else now on the forecast that I would like to talk about, and that's some significant rainfall associated with a low-pressure system that's expected to develop over the southeast of the state on Tuesday. Now, take a look at this one here. This low-pressure system will wrap itself up very nicely, and this is the troublemaking system that I was talking about yesterday for Tasmania, South Australia, and Victoria. This low-pressure system has almost cyclonic characteristics just with how it's rotating around here. Obviously, not a cyclone at all, not even a land depression, but just the winds here could kick up some nasty fire danger ratings for parts of South Australia and into the interior of Western Australia, and some heavy falls are also possible throughout the course of Wednesday for remote southeastern Western Australia, like I said, around Cocklebiddy, and then across towards Israelite Bay. I think Esperance will dodge the majority of this rainfall here. And you can see as it moves in towards South Australia, it does completely dissipate, but still could be a problem system in terms of thunderstorms for Victoria and New South Wales. Maybe not so much Tasmania at this point, but key point, I really want to keep watching this cold front here because by the time it gets itself into New South Wales, this could spark up a severe thunderstorm outbreak late next week and into early next uh, fortnight's weekend on the 14th and the 15th of September, respectively. So this is a cold front that I'm really going to keep an eye on. It's reciprocated amongst the other forecast models as well. You can see the Axis G3 does have some kind of rain-bearing event into the southeast of Western Australia, but it does have a completely different scenario playing out here, and I believe the GFS isn't quite on board with it yet. Oh, in fact, the GFS has came on board in the last couple of hours, but it is still a, in a completely different fashion of what the East Midwest is saying. Still, though, it's certainly a weather system worth watching, and take a look at these rainfall accumulations here uh, between sort of Tuesday evening into Wednesday evening, peak accumulations between 50 and 100 millimetres are possible, sort of around that 90 to 100 millimetre mark for parts of a remote southeast and western Australia. It is thunderstorms, so rainfall will be very hit and miss around here, and considering that in this massive swathe of rainfall, about 100 people live there, I think that it isn't really worth talking about. For, but for those moving through the southeast of western Australia or planning on doing so in the next 10 days, make sure you are watching the forecast very closely. There is a chance of roads being closed off completely on Tuesday and Wednesday. I reckon the air highway will be fine. I don't reckon there's enough rainfall to wash that out again this year. However, uh, just be, make sure you do err on the side of caution. Maybe give the area miss on Tuesday and Wednesday if the rainfall is going to pan out to be this heavy. You know, I want to be driving in 100 millimetres of torrential rainfall. Now, before we go and talk about uh, weather up in the tropics, we'll talk about weather in the subtropics, and that's going to be the temperature forecast over the next 10 days. Uh, the only place that is remaining rather wintry is Tasmania and Victoria, where they've still got those constant cold, uh, cold fronts moving through, bringing the rainfall down there. Same thing with Victoria. However, for the remainder of the nation, temperature's really starting to warm up now, and we've been talking about this every single video for the past couple of weeks. However, temperature's again expected to go into the mid to high 30s and even the low 40s for parts of Western Australia, mid 30s of the Northern Territory and mid to high 30s for parts of South Australia and Queensland. Temperatures will be a little bit more mild tomorrow with the passage of this cold front, especially in Western Australia, but into the mid uh, 30s for South Australia and even a pocket of 40 degrees expected outside of Minterby. Warm temperatures along the East Coast as well, Sydney expecting to go into the high 20s tomorrow and the low 30s possible in some of the eastern suburbs out there. Warm again on Friday, you can see warm again across the East Coast, in fact up to 28 down towards bigger on um, the New South Wales, 
Victoria border. So it is remaining very warm across New South Wales. In fact, across much of the state of New South Wales, becoming very warm indeed. And the snow melt is going to be kicked into high gear later on this week across some of the alpine areas of New South Wales. It's that time of the year when temperatures do start to warm and that snow starts to dissipate. Now under the influence of a low pressure system this weekend, temperatures across northern Western Australia and into the Northern Territory are going to skyrocket 42 on Sunday for parts of uh, northern Western Australia outside of Roebuck and Derby, up to 38, maybe even 40 degrees outside of Tyndall and across towards Wadi in the Northern Territory. Very warm indeed. Slightly cooler across parts of the south of the state. In fact, Alice Springs in stark contrast, the 40 degree temperatures, only expecting a top of 15 degrees there. So very cold indeed across Sunday, much below the long term average there as well. Warm again across parts of New South Wales and Queensland. And it is just a constant theme from here on out. Warm temperatures, slightly cooler next Tuesday by the looks of things and maybe next Wednesday as well. But as this low pressure system builds here, you can see if the Eastern River forecast comes to fruition, very warm indeed for Thursday the 12th and Friday the 13th of September. Uh, if this cold front does drag in that warm air that we are expecting it to over the coming couple of days as it moves into New South Wales. And like I said, that could spark up a severe thunderstorm event or two. So we will keep a very close eye on things on that forecast. And one last thing to end off this video, we're going to talk about the rainfall up in far north Queensland. It is starting to pile on. There were some good showers overnight and there's some heavy falls being reported as well. Or some heavy showers rather being reported across parts of the far north, especially into the mountainous regions, into the Daintree rainforest. Now the rainfall just keeps on piling up here now on the forecast. In fact, we're seeing steady increment, uh, incremental increases of around 10 to 15 percent on the forecast models every single day and that tells me that we are now into a wettening trend and I reckon over the next two weeks the onshore flow that we're seeing uh, especially later on into next week is going to bring an awful lot of rainfall to parts of far north Queensland potentially two to three hundred millimeters certainly something worth watching now the onshore flow today has not only been bringing some damaging wind gusts to areas around sort of Ingham and Cardwell where wind gusts have been averaging 60 to 70 kilometers an hour but it's also been bringing some showers which are expected to pick up throughout the course of today and be at their most intense later today and into tonight. Again, when I say intense, I use that term very loosely. We're not meaning uh, crazy, all-out, heavy, uh, monstrous rainfall accumulations that's going to cause catastrophic flooding across Queensland's far north. However, we are still talking about showers that could accumulate to 50 millimetres of rainfall in an hour for some areas, especially around sort of Topaz and Tully. Some heavy rainfall is expected up there throughout the course of today. Uh, the winds as well, certainly with the showers, worth watching. I wouldn't advise boating tonight into tomorrow morning it's going to be quite unpleasant you know the type of weather that I'm talking about up there so again that make sure you are staying safe and staying dry the rainfall will temporarily ease off Thursday and Friday slightly drier again Friday Saturday and Sunday could be a couple of dry periods this weekend before the rainfall pipes up again Monday afternoon again nothing too crazy expected there but through Monday and Tuesday another onshore flow which is going to be bringing showers and the isolated storm is going to continue to pile on that rainfall rainfall will continue through Wednesday and Thursday next week in fact it does get quite heavy next Thursday and Friday where we could be seeing daytime accumulations approach 25 to 50 millimeters up there and none of these numbers are standing out significantly again heavy rainfall is very uh, is a very hard term to use to describe this type of rainfall but when you take into account that's 150 millimeters over a 10 day period and like I always say with the rainfall being much more intense across some of the mountainous valleys around Babinda, Innisfail and Tully you can get away with calling for three potentially 350 millimeters of rainfall over the next 10 days that is quite a lot and certainly will saturate the catchments up in far north Queensland ahead of the real rainfall that's going to be coming through in the next couple of months. In terms of a drought monitoring forecast up here, you can see there's no areas of drought or drought-like conditions, but the soil moisture values is what's concerning me, significantly above average across a huge swathe of far north Queensland. In fact, the majority of the areas that we typically see flooding in are much above average, in fact, up to four times wetter than average outside of Innes, uh, Ingham and Cardwell. And that means when this northern rainfall onset really does start to pile on, which is expected to be earlier than usual as we just discussed in our recent forecast update on it, uh, I am expecting some pretty significant flooding to start to pipe up in far north Queensland. There'll be another forecast coming out on October 1st. I can already say there's going to be some major changes in that forecast, especially for Queensland's far north in terms of rainfall. However, right now it still looks really concerning in terms of how wet the river catchments are up here for this time of the year and how much rainfall still has to fall over the next couple of months before the real 
stuff comes in and causes that flooding. You can see these soil moisture values here up in far north Queensland at 100%. They typically hover at around 80 to 90%, which gives room for some runoff this time of the year. But at 100%, most of the rainfall that does fall up here just becomes runoff and adds to the river levels, which is going to cause some problems in terms of flooding up in Queensland's far north. Now, I'd also like to touch on the rainfall that's expected over the next 10 days across the north of Australia as a whole. Those thunderstorms are really starting to pipe up across some locations as well. Uh, well. They haven't really piped up yet, but now in the forecast, we're seeing rumbles of activity across the extreme far north of Queensland up towards Thursday Island and Lockhart River. And some thunderstorms now expected to fire up across the north of Western Australia into the later parts of next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It looks like the northern rainfall onset is really starting to... Um, show signs of occurring across northern Western Australia and parts of the Northern Territory. And this is a month or even two months before what the normal uh, date is for that northern rainfall onset. And another thing that I'm sure a lot of avid forecasters are also looking at is the amount of rainfall falling across Indonesia. It's really starting to take a nosedive up here. In fact, Indonesia is moving into a much drier period. And that typically means compared to long-term trends, the monsoon trough is now starting to head further south and the rainfall is about to pile up across northern Australia. It's still got a couple of months to wait for that it is early September, but it is only going to take a couple of months until we're seeing all out very heavy rainfall across the north of Australia and cyclones and all that tropical hoo ha, and that will be uh, upon us before you know it, that's for sure. Anyways, that is all that I have time for today. Thank you so much for watching the video at this point. If you have enjoyed it, then please do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and some feedback or a weather report for your location in the comment section down below as well would be lovely. Hey, there's a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them. They're the reason that I have access to all of this fancy software which is fantastic to use for these forecast updates but that is all for me today and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye